اللهم لك الحمد لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك احمدك ربي واستعينك واستغفرك واستلهمك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى واشهد ان لا اله الا انت الواحد الاحد والفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد اشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله المبعوث بين يدي الساعه بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا اللهم صل وسلم عليه وصل على اله وصحابته ومن والاهم واهتدى بهديهم واستنى بسنتهم ودا بدعوتهم الى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم اما بعد عباد الله اوصيكم ونفسي اولا بتقوى الله اتقوا الله سر سبحانه وتعالى في السر في السر والعلانيه والمنشط والمكره واغتمروا اوامره واجتنبوا نواهيه لعلكم تفلحون all praises to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator sustainer and cherisher of the worlds all praises and thanks to him for all of his wonderful gifts that we enjoy every day the sheer fact that i am alive and standing here able to talk and breathe that you are able to sit here and breathe and talk enjoy a morsel of food or a glass of water you name it we are enjoying the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day in and day out and as believers we cannot take anything for granted today you are here sitting today i am here standing and speaking to you tomorrow i could be in the hospital bed today i am able to breathe tomorrow i am not i will be having trouble breathing i will they have we will have to put a machine so as servants of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we must never ever take anything for granted everything is a gift from him given to us and everything will be taken away from us so let us let me remind myself and let me remind everyone here this is the essence of the consciousness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the seed that islam wants to plant in our hearts and minds once we have this consciousness we can lead a fulfilled life we can lead a happy life we can gain contentment we will relate to everybody peacefully harmoniously man amala salihan min dhakarin aw unsa wa mu'min falanuhi annahu hayatun tayyibah huwa wa cherishes faith in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is engaged in good works that are pleasing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator whether male or female we shall grant him we shall bestow on him or her a happy life happiness doesn't mean that you will have a mansion you will drive the most expensive car happiness is that joy within the peace within the contentment within laysa al-ghina an kathrat al-ard richness is not abundance of comforts and means and resources richness is the contentment of the heart 
So today we have already entered in a new year. So everyone talks about new year resolutions. Of course, this is one of those time for believers to engage in the two Islamic virtues, al muraqaba wal muhasaba. Muraqaba is you don't become heedless, you don't flow with the flow, you don't just live at as it pleases your ego, your desire. But stop and think where I am heading. What's my purpose in life? Am I moving towards that purpose? Fulfilling the purpose that God has created for me. God has wanted for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-A'la says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْخَى إِنَّ هَذَا لَفِ الصُّحُفِ الْأُولَى صُحُفِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى The Creator is speaking here. And Qad, Arab say, the grammarian say, tahqiq. It is to form a reality, a fact, undeniable fact, a categorical imperative actually. Qad aflaha man tazakka. He or she has achieved success. No doubt, undoubtedly, this is a fact cannot be denied. Who? Man tazakka. Whoever engages in acts of self-verification. Human being is created. We have wa nafsim wa ma sawwaha. Allah says, the mystery of the human soul. The nafs. There are various terms in the Quran. Nafs, ruh. Of course, each of them referring to a dimension because the issue is deep. So each time Quran is referring to one dimension. So those who look at the Quran in a flat way, superficial way, they cannot engage with the depth. They cannot probe the depth of the Quranic message. So the ego, the soul, which is at that level, everybody has that soul, and there is an inclination for good, an inclination for bad in us. So when Allah says, Qad man tazakka, he or she has achieved success beyond doubt. It's a fact. Who? Whoever engages in acts of self-purification. Because the soul has this capacity to do good, a capacity to do evil. Every one of us has an angelic companion and a shaitan within us. We need to be able to watch, not simply act. So I need to be aware of the shaitan acting out. Some people may get carried away and say there is a shaitanic possession. For shaitan and jinn, they don't process like that. This is one of the biggest dilemma among the communities who are prone to superstitions and then they are duped by those who exercise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't teach us that there is something called jinn possession, so you need to be aware and then you don't go to the doctor and then finally you end up committing suicide? No, 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 no. This is not Islamic teaching, actually. Islamic teaching is you pave the way for shaitan to take over you. And shaitan doesn't go come into your body and embody you. 
Now Shaitan whispers. Shaitan tempts. You all experience that temptation. And when you fall into the temptation, you get carried away, you can become an instrument of Shaitan. By doing the things that are displeasing to the Creator. That is, or you can watch and make sure you don't fall into the temptation of shaitan. You don't get carried away. You are able to knock him out, down. You are able to wrestle him down. The Prophet wasallam told Aisha that everybody has a shaitan, everybody is an angel. Then Aisha, the best student, asked Rasulullah, how about you, a messenger of Allah? Do you have a shaitan? Do you have a malak? A Korean malaki and a Korean shaitani in you as well? The Prophet smiled and said, yes, but I wrestled with him and I defeated him. So he doesn't whisper evil suggestions to me. But that's the Prophet of Allah. You and I constantly bombarded with the whisperings of shaitan. So we need to be on guard, engage in acts of purification. We need to purify our heart of pride, which is the root of our sins in Islam. We need to purify our heart from the obsession with wealth and dunya, as if there is no end to this. Today I am enjoying the best. I am living in the best mansion. I am driving the best car. And this is, I am here. Jannatul Khul. This is the card that shaitan will play, that this is he, life is here, life is here, life is here. Go, go. Amas, carry on, carry on. It's endless. No, the reckoning is coming. Yesterday is born, tomorrow is unborn, and today what you have for sure, I am not given a guarantee that I will be alive tomorrow. Yes, they have booked me for Khutbah next month, but I am not sure that I will be standing here. Maybe I will be in my grave. So what I need to do is, before you engage in dhikr, Allah says you need to engage in purification. Purify your heart and soul. Take out those toxins. Because otherwise, dhikr will be just whisperings. Just, just, just. It has no effect. Dhikr has no effect. Prayer has no effect unless we purge our heart of this obsession with dunya, obsession, this greed to make money using any means possible and all that is required is eat halal meat, hand slaughter meat, that's fine. And you make money unethically, you cheat, you employ every means possible and be outsmarting everybody to make as much money as possible but halal chicken, halal goat, that's all. And don't ask how this goat is not reared. As Imam Shabalullah said, there is a dharma for the goat, there is a sharia for the goat. Goat should not be eating animal. Goat should be fat grass. Cow should be fat grass. Chicken should not be given those things that we give. And nobody asked that question. Halal is Bismillah, just hand slaughtered. Astaghfirullah. So all the essence of the ethics is violated, and then you focus on this little minor thing, forgetting the big things, priorities. But you won't be able to engage in any of this. You will not be able to purify. You will not be able to celebrate remembrance of Allah as long as you focus on dunya. 
بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا but you prefer this world the goodies of this world yes it's so tempting إن الدنيا حلوة خضراء the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم warned these people I stand here and shake and tremble when the Sahaba complained to Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying that we are so poor we cannot have enough to eat days would go by no cooking in the house of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم they complained what was the reply of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم I am not worried about poverty I am worried about the abundance of wealth you will amass Allah will open the treasures of this earth for you and you will get carried away and forget Allah is in his messenger and you lead a lifestyle as if there is no end to it and then you will appear on the day of judgment calling to me Ma, here I am Rasulullah the angels will say drive them away they don't belong to you they speak your language but they don't have anything that make them your followers to be called the followers of Rasulullah followers of Islam why in the dunya hulwa khadra this dunya is sweet enticing very lucrative tempting and you will be deceived by it so we need to watch out بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وابقى the آخرة the life to come after death is better and is enduring so the priority for Muslims today brothers and sisters I need to focus priority number one is we need to get back to the essentials what Allah said in this surah is the essentials of religion spirituality morality remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we need to leave all these minor frivolous issues jinn possession has become a big topic now get out of this and bring back people to the essence of this religion because if you focus on this thing you are promoting the superstitions and maybe you end up killing people people don't go to the doctor thinking it is a jinn possession and then what happens the next news that you hear is they died of suicide this is happening in the Muslim community so it's good attend this mental program because Islam doesn't teach as long as you follow Islamic principles and live a spiritual life and focus on the priorities of this religion Shaitan cannot enter your body. First of all, Shaitan doesn't enter the body. This is wrong. Okay, so get back to the essentials of religion, the soul of religion. And third priority for us is have goals in life based on spiritual goals. Spirit, your life hereafter the legacy that you and I want to leave behind us so that when I die, when you die people will remember me and you as a smiling person as a gentle soul as a compassionate person and they will from their heart will raise their hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Allah have mercy on that brother or sister did you touch his heart, her heart? Did you move someone to acts of compassion? It's very important. And the number three important priority for us is we need a spiritual community. Our children don't have it. Spiritual community doesn't mean meeting for pleasure and meeting on theology which is, does not concern them. Keep them focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Spiritual community is what will bring them together as brothers and sisters in faith. They will celebrate the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be taught to purify themselves, to celebrate the Qurullah.
Yes, there is an emotional aspect of Islam which is taken out and because of that our children don't have that taste of Iman. We need to bring it back. Of course, I'm not saying you start this, you know, dance, spiritual dance. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about involving our children and the youth in spiritual, as a spiritual community. Otherwise, shaitan will take them and make them part of their community. And this is what's happening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. Have this resolution. It can fix your mind so that today is better than yesterday. There is no guarantee that tomorrow I will be alive. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to focus on the important things in religion, important beliefs, important practices, and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and leading a watchful life, a vigilant life, self-examined life. Aqulu qawmi hadha wa astaghfirullah. الحمد لله الذي هدانا إلى دين الإسلام وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا نبيه ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما I keep on reminding you know كتبة is part of صلاة if you distract yourself even by prayer at the time of كتبة you did not get the benefit of Qutbah, benefit of Jum'ah. وَمَنْ لَغَا فَلَا جُمْعَةَ لَا Who will distract himself from hearing the Qutbah? Because the angels present close their book and they listen to the Qutbah. So it's very important for us. You cannot read Qur'an, you cannot engage in Salah while the Qutbah is going on. Yes. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all of us to learn this religion in an authentic way and practice it lightly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on those. There are many who are sick and suffering, going through surgery, very critical phase in their life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send out healing and cure upon them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them a good life, if life is good for them. If it is good for them to die, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take their souls with mercy and forgive them and cleanse them and admit them into Jannatul Firdaus. And of course, let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy on those who have passed away. One day I will die, you will die. So remember those who have gone before us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admit them into Jannah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and you the honor of being reunited with them with the prophets and the saints and the martyrs and the righteous people. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on those who are oppressed and persecuted all over the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them gain their dignity and rights as human beings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save our children and grandchildren from the temptations of Vitaar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts and the hearts of our children and grandchildren to receive the truth of Islam so that they are transformed by this life-giving message to be compassionate, to be careful, to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be mindful of the duties to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. رَبَّنَا لَا تَتَعَلَنَا ذَمَّنْ إِلَّا قَفَرْتَ وَلَا هَمَّنْ إِلَّا فَرَّجْتَ وَلَا دَيْنًا إِلَّا قَضَيْتَ وَلَا مَرِيدًا إِلَّا شَفَيْتَ وَلَا مَيِّتًا إِلَّا رَحِمْتَ وَلَا حَاجَةً تُرْدِكَ إِلَّا قَضَيْتَهَا يَا رَحْبَ الرَّحِمِينَ أَقْمِ الصَّلَاةِ